Hi everybody, my name is Russ Peterson. I play the bassoon. I play the bassoon with the Fargo Moorhead Symphony. I uh, thought we'd talk a little bit today about this strange instrument. It's not the most popular instrument. Not a lot of people play the bassoon, but it's very important in all uh, orchestras and chamber groups. It's the lowest member of the woodwind family. Um, it's got a big brother as well. It's twice as long as it's called the contrabassoon. So these instruments play very low. Uh, instruments play high or low depending on how long they are. And the bassoon is very long. The sound actually comes through this metal piece we call the bocal down through the bottom and out through the top. And I thought I'd show you each of the pieces of the bassoon. As I said, this is called the bocal. It's a hollow metal piece of metal. And as I vibrate a reed, which I'll show you in a minute, it goes through this. I'll set this down. Then we have a small part of the bassoon called the wing joint. It's also hollow. It goes down into the boot of the bassoon. And you can see the bassoon has two holes, one where the sound enters. It spins around through the bottom of the bassoon and comes back up through the other hole. And then we've got these two pieces here. This is called the long joint. It's a larger than the, the rest of these. As the sound travels through the instrument, each piece gets a little larger. And then finally, the bell of the bassoon. So when we put all these parts together, we have one very large hollow tube. The wing joint goes here. Snap them together. The bocal goes on the very top. Now, the bassoon doesn't work very well if it doesn't have something to produce the sound. Clarinet uses a single reed. The flute blows air over the hole. The French horn buzzes their lips to get reed. But the bassoon, like the oboe, has what we call a double reed. Here's a bassoon reed. It's larger than the oboe reed because the, the bassoon itself is much larger. It's basically just two pieces of wood that I've tied together and then clipped the tip. And as I blow through the reed, the two pieces of wood vibrate. This is what the reed sounds like just by itself. It's a beautiful sound for me because then I know we actually make our reeds and, and make sure that that's that the way the reed will go out a crow, crows the right way before we put it on the bocal. So that's fine. So I would put that on the bassoon bocal. Now the vibration that that makes and the strange sound will go through this bocal. Listen to it just with the bocal. Put that sound on the bassoon. The bassoon basically amplifies that and this is what it sounds like with on the bassoon. So the bassoon reed is the only thing that makes sound on this instrument. And as I put each finger down, the t the length of the instrument actually increases. So when I play when I put my first finger down, this is the length of the tube. When I put my second finger down, it increases a little bit. Every time I put a finger down, the tube gets longer until, of course, I put the very last key down here, the low B flat, and that's the lowest. The, the sound is going through the entire instrument. <clears throat> so here's the lowest note on the bassoon. And I'll start coming up a bit. So the bassoon is a very versatile instrument. It can play very low 
and it can match with tubas and low instruments. And then it can also play very high. It doesn't even sound like the same instrument. It's, it's kind of fun. The different registers are so different. None of this, of course, would be possible without making sure that your reed works properly. And that's why I brought all these reed tools to show uh, what we need to do to make this reed. I'm going to put this back in the water to keep it soaking. We actually start with tube cane. This looks like a little piece of bamboo, doesn't it? This was grown in southern France, where most reed cane is grown. It's, there, there's, poss there's some grown in China and Argentina and other places, but most cane is, is grown in southern France. Because of the climate and the amount of rain that that area gets, it makes great reed cane. So what we do is we cut this reed cane. We cut it down so it's a little smaller. You can see that it, it's about one-fourth of that tube. We use this. We fold it in half until eventually we can shape it down and clip the tip. And then we have the opening, which makes the vibration. <clears throat> I need to use many different tools to do this. I've got pliers, we've got reed knives so we can scrape the reed, and we actually scrape the reed until it sounds just like how we want it to. Um, so I'm scraping my reeds in every rehearsal and every concert I'm playing, I make sure to scrape the reed until it just plays just right. Um, so the bassoon is, is a, a lovely sounding instrument. It's, it can play different styles of music and lots of composers have written for the bassoon over the years. Uh, one of the most popular pieces the bassoon has is written by Mozart and this is called the Mozart Bassoon Concerto. Just a little bit of the opening of the Mozart Bassoon Concerto. It's really a, a beautiful piece. Other composers have written for the instrument to use its very low register. You might recognize this little bit from Peter and the Wolf by Sergei Prokofiev. This little bit represents the grandfather, and it's the very low end of the instrument, and it's kind of a grumpy grandfather walking with a cane. <laughs> Some composers like to use the very upper range of the bassoon. This little excerpt I'll play is from a Stravinsky piece called The Rite of Spring. And it starts with the bassoon on the very highest notes. So next time you visit the symphony or go to a concert, look into the, look into the orchestra somewhere and see if you can see the strange looking instrument called the bassoon and uh, tell your friends, I know how that works. It uses a double reed and it's the longest, lowest member of the woodwind family. This program is funded by the North Dakota Council on the Arts, the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008, and by the members of Prairie Public.